So today, I'm just going to expand on the snake biting kit and I'm actually going to show you how to treat a snake bite if you get bitten out here in the bushland. Please remember, you always need to seek medical advice when you're bitten by a snake. And the other thing, especially in Western Australia, always assume that the snake that has bitten you is poisonous. Okay, so for the purpose of the video, I'm going to simulate that I have been bitten just here on my leg. Now, a fair majority of snake bites are going to be on the legs for obvious reasons, wandering around in bushland and stuff like that. So I have marked on my leg just here and just here, simulating roughly where I've been bitten. Now, generally you get two fang marks, but sometimes you only get one. So here's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna identify the, the bite. Okay, I've, I've been bitten. Second thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go for my snake bite kit. This is a human snake bite kit. I do have another one in my vehicle for dogs. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open the kit and you're gonna stay calm. You're gonna try and slow your breathing. Breathe nice and slowly. You're then gonna mark on either side where the bite is. The time is 12.45. I'm gonna write 12.45 just here on my leg. As you can see, that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. The second thing that I'm gonna do is I am gonna take my crepe bandage. Now, I'm just gonna use an open one for the purpose of this. I'm gonna take my crepe bandage. I'm gonna place it at the bottom of my leg, just below the bite, and I'm gonna wrap the entire bite. Now, you never clean a snake bite. Um, there's a few reasons for that, but the main purpose is there is a possibility that the bite can be identified from the poison. Okay, there's my first stage. Now, I'm not gonna remove my shoe because it is simply too much effort to take my shoe off. You want to make sure that your body is calm and you're not exerting a lot of energy. That's the first thing. The second thing that I want to do is take compression. You need compression on a bite. I'm going to place the compression bandage over the top, nice and tight. Not tight enough to cut the circulation off but tight enough to slow the poison down, as you can see. Then, from here, I'm going to wrap my third bandage. Now, my third bandage is going to be the important one. This bandage is going to be the bandage that goes towards my heart. It's going to go towards the ex ex higher area of blood. Again, I'm keeping it tight, but not tight enough to cut circulation off in its entirety. It doesn't matter if it goes over, over your clothing. It doesn't matter if it's uh, clothing is obstructing it. As long as it is tight enough to be really restricting that muscle. From there, I'll take my second crepe bandage. Oops, my second bandage. So this is bandage number four in total. I'm then going to continue, oops, continue up my leg. Oh, 
all the way up. Until I have started putting pressure on my main artery. This is my femoral artery here somewhere. You want pressure in that area. Once that's done, now this now has a very high level of compression on it. It's still it's not preventing blood circulation, but it's nice and tight. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to phone and I want to call for help. So in Western Australia, it is triple zero. So I want to ring zero, zero, zero. Now, they will ask you, the first question that you get asked by the operator is police, fire, ambulance. You want to say ambulance and then you want to give your rough location. So you don't want to be moving around a lot at that time. As you can see, I'm not moving my leg around a lot at all. The reason I've marked the time on the wound is because when you do get medical assistance and if they have to remove the bandage they can see what time is correct on the bite because a lot of people by that stage you will start sweating you you may get a bit of nausea you may get sick so you might forget crucial pieces of information like the time that you were bitten this way it will prevent you from forgetting that and you don't have to verbalize it when help arrives. You always want to know what your rough location is. Now, I'm out in the middle of nowhere in scrubland, but I do roughly know what my location is. Uh, there are some mobile phones that have got uh, GPS coordinates. You can give those, or your northings and your eastings, or your eastings and your northings, I should say. Um, they are also a really good guide to giving somebody your location. The other thing that you want to do after you've completed this is you want to take a nice large stick or something similar and you want to splint it. Um, personally, I recommend splinting on the outside and the reason for that is because the bite's on the inside. So if they do have to cut here, they can leave the splint in place, they can cut they can open. The last thing that you want to do is panic. You don't ever want to panic when you get bitten by a snake out in the bushland. You're going to start breathing heavier, it's going to speed up your heart, and the poison is going to start moving at a faster rate. So that's one thing you don't want to do. Remember, never try and capture the snake that has bitten you. You don't ever want to try and capture it you do, however, want to try, if you can, to remember the, the rough colours. Now, in these snake kits, you'll also find an emergency blanket. The reason for that is because some people can actually go into shock and you do require a blanket to keep, keep your temperature at a good rate. The other thing that you want to do is if it's night time you want to stay warm but the biggest thing that you need to remember is lack of movement lack of movement in this situation is your best friend keep hydrated try not to eat food um, it's better to have an empty stomach or not have eaten any time in the recent past and the reason for that is because it depends on the medication that you're going to get from, uh, from medical assistance. So that's just a quick example of a snake bite to the leg and how to bandage it in the first instance of for first aid purposes. Now, you need to always remember where you are and you need to 
remember the three S's. Stay calm, send for help, or ask for help, snake bite kit. They're the three things that you need almost immediately when you get bitten by a snake. And please, always assume that a snake is poisonous in Western Australia. Even if it's not, treat it exactly the same. Now the way that I wrapped my leg is also the same way that you wrap your arm. Obviously if it's your torso area where the bite site is, then it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but you still wanna put some type of pressure in that area. Snake bite kit, stay calm, send for help.